So in case you haven't figured it out yet, it's New Member Sunday. In just a little bit, we're going to be welcoming 28 new members into our spiritual community. I love New Member Sunday. It's always one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Not only because it's a celebration, it's a party, and I like that, but also because it thrills me to know that there are people who are finding value and importance in what it is that we do here. There are people who are saying, they're joining, they're saying, I believe in this teaching. I believe in this spiritual community, and I want to be part of it. Reminds me of a story. There's these three couples who want to join a new church. One couple's been married for 40 years, one couple's been married for 20 years, and one couple are newlyweds. And the pastor is talking to him, and they said, okay, so in order for you to become members of our center, you need to refrain from any sort of um, physical affection or passion for a month. And then when you come back in a month, then you can join the, join the church. And so they go away, and a month later they come back, and the couple has been married 40 years, says, you know, you know, we've been married a long time, so, you know, it wasn't all that difficult. It's okay. Yeah, we did it. Okay, no problem. You're welcome to the church. And the couple been married 20 years. He said, well, you know, we're still kind of into it. But, you know, we, we were able to just kind of, you know, refrain. And it was difficult, but we were able to do it. Okay, welcome. And the newlywed couple said, you know, we were doing so good. We were doing so good. And then... The guy says, and then she she bent down and she looked just really, and I couldn't help it. I just took her right there. I just couldn't do it. And the pastor said, well, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid we're not, not going to be able to let you come to the church. And they said, well, that's okay. The Safeway won't let us in either. <laughs> I've been here two years. Now you're seeing the real me. I tell you like that. Okay. <laughs> For most of us, for most of us, there's, there's great comfort in being with people who are of like mind, people who share the same spiritual beliefs that we do. In the Buddhist tradition, it's called a Sangha, which is loosely a community of people who have attained at least the first stage of awakening. It's one of the cornerstones of the Buddhist teaching, having a place to go and a group to worship and to share with. Uh, the Dhammapada, this is actually the Buddha's uh, words, said, how joyful to look upon the awakened and to keep company with the wise. Follow the shining ones, the wise, the awakened, the loving, for they know how to work and forbear. If the traveler, and that in our word would be the seeker, if the traveler can find a virtuous and wise companion, let him go with him joyfully and overcome the dangers of the way. Follow them as the moon follows the path of the stars. So this sense of community that we're talking about, it's very, very important to us as human beings as we are on this journey of life. We like feeling connected. We like feeling unified. That's where the word community comes from, common unity. We are together. We are one heart, as Amy just said. And it goes beyond just liking to be with like-minded people or people that we have uh, something in common with. One of the basics of our teaching that we talk about almost every week is that we are all connected to one another. We are all part of the one. Because the truth is, our unity and our connection and our oneness, it, it, we are coming from that which is. That make sense? That make sense after that joke? Okay, we are coming from that which is. We are part of the universe, the life, the substance, the, the universe. We're made of the same material as everyone else. Here's how Ernest Holmes put it. We are therefore members of the universe, and being members of that which unites everything, we are some part of each other. Just think about the word universe. 
uni meaning one, first meaning voice, or chorus, one voice. We come from the same source. We are unified. We are connected. And one of the other things that we talk about almost every Sunday is that God or the universe or whatever you want to call it is always growing. It is always expanding. It is always taking on new form. It isn't limited by what has happened before. It yearns to experience and express in new and unlimited ways. And one of the ways that it does it is through us and as us. So even though we all have the same basic ingredients, we all have the same arm, we have two arms, two legs, two ears, two eyes, we have similar organs, we have similar bodily systems, and yet not one of us is exactly the same as another. Do you like that? Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Not one of us is the same. We are one, but not the same. As Mark, Reverend Marjorie put it during her meditation, it is unity into multiplicity. It is the one expressed in limitless ways. So there is no one that is just like you, and yet there are eight billion people on the planet with whom we are connected at some level. Just sit with that for a minute. Eight billion, that's I'm talking about all the other living forms. Eight billion people on the planet with whom we are connected. So what affects us affects others. What harms us harms others. What is good for us is good for others. There's an old poem by John Donne called No Man is an Island. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is part of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. No man, no woman is an island. When we really get that, when we really understand that level of connection, that level of unity, when we really, really can see ourselves and others an extent, as an extension of the one and learn to work with one another despite our differences, when we are really there, then we will see the change that we want to see in the world. As long as we are seeing differences, we will not have the change we want. When we begin to see the similarities, the connection, the oneness, we will be, see the change that we want to see. Mm -hmm. So there's a wonderful teaching story that illustrates this part, this, uh, this idea that we are each part of one another. It's called stone soup. There's many iterations of it, but this is the one I like. Once upon a time, somewhere in post-war Eastern Europe, there's a great famine where the people jealously hoarded whatever food they could find, hiding it even from their friends and their neighbors. One day a wandering soldier came into town began asking questions as if he was planning to stay for the night. And the villagers became very nervous and told him, there is not a bite to eat in this entire province. You better just keep moving on. He says, that's okay. He says, I have everything I need. In fact, I was thinking about making some stone soup to share with you all. He pulled an iron cauldron out of his pack, and he filled it with water, and he built a fire underneath it. And then with great ceremony, he drew an ordinary looking stone out of a velvet bag and dropped it in the water. By now, hearing the rumor of food, we are all one. <laughs> Most of the villagers had come into the square or they were watching from their windows. And as the soldier sniffed the broth, and licked his lips in anticipation. 
hunger began to overcome the villagers' skepticism. Ah, the soldier said, I do like a tasty stone soup. Of course, stone soup with some cabbage? Now that's hard to beat. Well, soon a villager went away and came back and had a cabbage that he ret retrieved from his hiding space and he added it to the pot. And then the soldier said, you know, once I had stone soup with cabbage and a little bit of salt beef, and I tell you, it was fit for a king. Well, the village butcher, who was usually quite miserly, managed to find some salt beef that he had hidden and added it to the pot. And so it went, potatoes, onions, carrots, mushrooms, all added to the stone soup until there was indeed a delicious meal for everyone. The villagers, they were amazed, thinking that it was this magical stone that, that, that had made this grand meal. And they saw it as an answer to their problems. So they offered the soldier a great deal of money for it, but the soldier refused to sell it and traveled on. So, of course, the moral of the story is that by working together with everybody contributing what they can, a greater good is achieved. Because each one of us has something so unique. Each one of us has so essential to offer the world. Each one of us adds value to the mix, to the soup. And if we don't add our something, whatever that something is, the flavor of life for everyone is diminished. Which brings us to today's celebration, of course. As I said, we have 28 people who have chosen to be members of our spiritual community, our sangha, our village. They were attracted to us, they were attracted to this teaching because they're waking up. And they wanted to be with other people who were waking up. I want you to think for a minute back to the time, the first time you came in through doors like these. Maybe you had these beliefs, right? And these feelings and this way of looking at life and you thought you were the only one. Remember that? And then you walked into a place like this, whether it was here or whether it was at another center, and you heard the message, and you listened to the words of the songs, and you, you talked to the people, and you knew you'd come home. You'd found your people. You found your tribe. You found your village. Each person who is joining us today felt something like that at some level. And each of them has something to offer that will allow our village, our Sangha, to become more. So please, welcome the newest members of our Sangha, our community. As I call your name, if you'll come and stand here. And Marjorie, if you could give me a hand, please. Bringing the microphone. I forgot to tell you this part. And then hand it to them. All right. Charlotte Bennett, Hugh Bingham, Pam Cates, Carol Clavette, Chelsea Davidson, Bronwyn Day, Dan DeMann, Trina Elliott, Shauna Engbert. Giselle Gillard, Gillard, Ladine Hofarth, Val Hahn, Laura Jackson, Lori Michelle Johnson, Shannon Lee, Ken Bays, Andrea Mc McLandris, Doug Patterson, Sam Rafos, Tyler Reagan, Reagan, Don Reiferstein, Adrian Rodriguez, Natasha Sawatsky, 
Tegan Shapira, Devin Snurge, Goldie Strait, Don Sutcliffe, and David Todd. for me, but uh, the message from the Century here has helped me so much, so thanks to all of you. Thank you, I love this place. It's easy to get up in the morning on a Sunday knowing we're coming here. Thank you. My heart is open to yours. As I stated last week, thank you for accepting me and my entire family. Thank you, and what you can count on me for is to be of service to you to make a difference and listen to you as the possibility that you have. Thank you. I am grateful and I am blessed. Thank you. I am too. It's a beautiful start to the week, always. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the welcome for our family. And uh, from Justin, when he told her she was, we were joining the church, me and Shauna, she wants to know why she thinks it's her home too. Yes. You know what? I got that. I got that. We will rectify that. Thank you so much. There's just no place in Calgary that has the kind of energy that's in this room on a Sunday. It's so beautiful. Um, as the song says, I am so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful to be here and with all of you. Thanks. 
Thanks very much for such a warm welcome, and I'm really excited to get to know everybody. Thank you. And the celebration actually is continuing. And the people who uh, are involved in this don't know that we're doing this quite yet. I can't remember which one comes in order, but I figured since we were in celebration, we're going to do this. Okay, yes. So this Wednesday is Professional Administrators Day. And uh, we have the most amazing administrator in the history of the world who works for us, who does everything. She makes me look really, really good. <laughs> so we're going to have uh, Ethel Newton come here. Does she know? Oh. <laughs> there she comes, there she comes. Ethel, would you come down here, please? Yeah. Is this Quadra Island? Yeah. 